Hi there, guys. We're at South Coast Welding Academy in Houston, Texas, the home of WeldTube. We have a special guest with us, Peter Zila. Peter, do you want to tell a little bit about yourself? I came here from Milwaukee, straight 20-hour drive, and um, by trade, I am not a pipe welder. I'm like a junkyard welder. Um, I have a job shop in the Milwaukee area, and um, we do a lot of recycling yards and um, also water tanker trailer setups, aluminum catwalks, aluminum tankers, a, a lot of random odds and ends aluminum work. So today um, we're going to stick weld some aluminum, although everybody says there's really not a need for it because you can TIG weld it, right? You can MIG weld it. And what you're going to do in a 20 mile or 30 mile an hour wind on some dirty material out in the field, stick welding seems to be a good option for this. So we're going to experiment a little bit with uh, pulse stick, aluminum stick, aluminum pulse stick, and we'll figure out why, why this works. Nice. So that's going to be a very interesting video. Peter, take it away. We have some quarter inch material here, some coupons, and um, we have some eighth inch electrodes. Those electrodes are good anywhere from about 100 thousandths material thickness to 3 eighths. The power source we're going to use today is an inverter stick welder. Um, we got to cheat a little bit. The aluminum rods burn really quick, so what we do is we're going to put a pulse on the stick. The guys that invented it in 2005 are these guys here, Stell. And in 2017, HTP brought it to the States. So now we're going to use this machine. We're going to experiment with and without pulse and see what results we can get, what we can get for consistency on aluminum stick welding. So aluminum is not just an excellent electrical conductor. It's also an ex excellent thermal conductor, which means as you weld, the aluminum tries to suck the heat out of your weld area. If you weld on a big tanker truck, not just on a little coupon, you need excessive amounts of heat to keep your puddle liquid. You can preheat this with a torch. The key is to have consistency. You should know what temperature you're preheating to. So a heat crayon, like a temple stick, could be your friend on something like this. The other thing is a little bit temperature control on your welding machine like a hot start option or temperature control as you're welding may help you. So what I have done with my machine is I utilized one of those TIG remote controls and it plugs right into the front of the machine and ultimately I will be able as I'm welding with the thumb to control my heat as I'm welding so I can do a hot start, I can slow it down if there is enough heat in the material or if the fit up is not perfect and I can fill the crater. And so this helps me to control heat and heat input rather than committing to a preset amperage on the machine. The other nice feature that this machine has is it has a pulse option, which was originally designed for 6010 pipe welding. I found it works really well on aluminum. If you set your machine to an amperage, let's say 100 amps, your and you turn the pulse option on, you can pick a pulse frequency from 0.4 hertz all the way up to 5 hertz. I found for aluminum about 2.2, between 2 and 2.5 works the best. What that does is it makes the rod not burn as fast as it normally would, and it actually gives you some nice ripples in the weld. What happens is half of the time you weld at 100 amps, half of the time you weld at 50 amps, it's a 50% background, 50% pulse on time. So these rods are MG rods. It's a 405. It's an aluminum repair rod. It comes in different diameters, 3 seconds, 1 8 and 5 seconds. Today we're using 1 8 Usually, if I know nothing about stick rods, the box tells me most of everything I need to know. DC, electrode positive, and it gives me an amperage range. Normally, I would say start in the middle, and work your way up and try it out. I've used these rods before. I know they are the most happy between 80 and 100. So I'm gonna set the maximum slider on my machine to about 110 amps. So I have some, a little bit hot start option, but I have some adjustment, some lead way on when I weld to pull it down and still have a fine adjustment. 
So these rods, once you have them out of the package, you kind of want to use them. They draw moisture, you don't really want to put them back. If you put them in an oven, they get brittle, the powder just falls off. The special thing about aluminum rods is they burn a lot quicker than like a 7018. The slag is kind of like a milky deal. And really the key is preheat. Consistent preheat would be ideal. For our case here today, we do an approximate preheat because we have the adjustment on the machine. And then after it cools down fully, the slag should release very easy by just scraping it. No need to hammer on it. Whatever slag you can not release by scraping it, take a rag with warm water and just wash it off. It literally washes off with hot water. So now let's get to it. Right here we are in the arc welding mode, which is your general stick welding program. Cellulosic is for 6010, TIG welding, but we're in the arc welding mode. Here we're picking arc force. You don't really need much arc force. I'm going to set this to 25%. Then um, I will turn the hot start on to 40% hot start just to get the rod lit because we're welding on the lower end of what the rod is rated for. And then um, the pulse frequency, I'm going to set to 2.2 hertz. My maximum slider, I'm setting to 110. So now I can adjust from 110, like all the way down while I'm welding. Oh uh, yeah, so we're gonna preheat this here and you can kind of see like right there as the water comes off where the water evaporates. You see it on the table real good. Wherever the water is gone right here, that's about 210, 220 degrees, then more towards the inside. So we're kind of trying to preheat to about 250 just to get a little bit heat in and then tack it and weld it. Yeah, if you thought a 7018 rod would be hard to restrike, those aluminum rods are even harder to restrike. You can see where the, where the slag is already separating up here. As you let this cool down naturally, it'll all peel right off. There's no need to like beat it. You just like rake the tow lines and it's gonna come off. Yeah, it's coming off. That's what a stick welder looks like, Travis. Not like me, like a maintenance welder.
Hey there guys, we're back in here. That was a really awesome demonstration. I've never before done aluminum pulse stick. That's awesome. And not successful aluminum stick probably oh, at yeah. all. <laughs> so the key is heat. It's that easy. Just if you have the right heat and if you have control of the heat, even we did some runs even without pulse, it works just well. It's just aluminum is a very good thermal conductor. It's all heat driven. It's not, don't commit to a certain amperage number. That's okay. the only, that's the only tip. I have and don't and be generous with the free heat. Oh nice. Thank you very much for showing me this. It's, it's awesome. And we want to want to mention that we're at South Coast Welding Academy in Houston, Texas. You can follow South Coast Welding Academy on Instagram and also WeldTube on, on their Instagram channel and their YouTube channel. And Peter, what is your Instagram channel? My Instagram channel is Zila Z-I-L-A Welds W-E-L-D-S. My YouTube channel is just Zila. Awesome.